Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're uh, working on a conveyor, and these are conveyor rotators. <clears throat> now this doesn't look like that much, just a threaded stud, but one side we got a fixed stud right here, that's fixed. This other side, we've got what we call a lifter and a crown inside, and as I rotate this, it lifts. You can see that stud going in and popping back out. So this uh, is made to bolt onto a conveyor and index parts north, south, east, and west. Now within it, <clears throat> um, within this, the outer shell and the barrel, uh, there's some components. You know, it doesn't look like a lot here, but down inside, and I've got one here that I've cleaned. This is what we call the crown. And then we've got another part, two-sided. We call that a lifter. This is threaded inside. That's a through hole. And they just, you can see the OD on those two is different. And as the part rotates, it lifts and turns 90 degrees and it'll index north, south, east, and west. Now, this is a weldment. And we had some failures. You know, they are, um, usually when there's a failure on a conveyor line, there's human error involved. And here's some of the studs. They were coming out of the lifters. You can see that those conveyor hooks got crashed. And it's from people putting parts that are too big on there or not, or not having them indexed properly when they put the fixtures on. Uh, usually a conveyor is very repetitive. But uh, if someone puts something on the conveyor wrong, uh, it will cause the part to crash and damage the uh, rotator or the hook. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get... We got to get the rest of these apart. Some of these I've already gotten apart. So there's the threaded hole in the back. And that's just a weldment. And then you can see we've cut out the weld here on this side. And the crown slips inside of here and gets welded. So you can see where we've cut out the weld. And this outer is made out of uh, DOM tubing. Pretty accurate. You know, it's an inch and a quarter OD and a one inch ID. So it's a heavy wall tube. And the thing about the weldment is all this has to go inside. This goes inside with the stud already installed. And the stud gets welded on this backside. You see I've cut out the weld there. Uh, the stud goes in, gets welded, gets inserted into this. And this whole mess gets put in to here and then uh, and then gets welded together. And then at, only after it's installed, it gets greased through that pinhole right there with a hypodermic needle. Okay. So that's a that's a bar Z rotator right there. I've got uh, oh out in the field I've probably got a few hundred of these things on this line. They sent five in that are bad. They just they take them off the line and uh, just set them to the side. So uh, over the course of about three years, they've have managed to damage five of these things. Here's one with the grease still on it and the stud still on it. And you can see how it lifts and turns, lifts and turns, lifts and turns. So that's the uh, that's the rotator right there that indexes parts. And uh, the parts either need to, there are times when the parts need to be parallel with the conveyor. And there are times when the parts have to be adjacent to the conveyor. So it's uh, capable of turning in both directions. Okay. So let's get on the lathe and I'll show you how to cut out uh, a weldment and get in there and get, that, get those parts out of there. Okay, so dealing with the uh, weldments is pretty easy if you know how the thing is constructed. And as it, as it was, I built these so I know how they're constructed. Okay, so our, we got our part in there, we've touched off on the OD, and we already know that's inch and a quarter. We know the crown that goes in, we know that's a one inch, so now we can, we've touched off, we've uh, set the DRO to inch and a quarter, now we can dial into one inch, which is the same size as our crown and cut away the majority of that weld. And I'm using a, a negative insert because uh, we're probably going to get some interruptions here. There are 
times when it breaks loose and if it's going to break the carbide, but that's the nature of the game there. There it is. All right. So now we can remove our rotator and our crown, which is a pretty snug fit in there. Just slide this back a little bit. See if we can get a pair, a pair of pliers on it. Let me grab a pair of pliers and we'll see if we can get on that crown and uh, sneak that turkey out of there because it's still, must be a burr on there or something. Oh, well, there it comes. Okay, so there's, there's all the magic inside of that, uh, inside of that rotator right there. And it's just a big greasy mess right now, but uh, we'll get it uh, we'll get it cleaned up, get that stud changed, and uh, get it put back together. As long as it's chucked up, we'll get a we'll get a chamfer on there and get ready for the reweld. It's uh, it's already there. It's no big deal to change the tool and just do a do a quickie out OD and ID chamfer. And now that body's ready to get cleaned and uh, reassembled. We just got to change the studs on the uh, lifters. Okay, well, we got all the bodies cut open. And some have the studs still. These, these, uh, the fixed studs just get Loctited in. So some of them spun out when we were taking it apart. Some didn't. We'll, we'll, re we'll clean them and restud them. Uh, the trick now is on these little lifters. See, the studs go in and then they get tack welded around the perimeter there. You can see these, uh, you can kind of catch a glimpse of that weld right there. They just get tacked in. And it's just a big nasty mess in there, but yeah, it's tack welded. So these need to get chucked up next, and you get in there, and you have to cut out that weld, and then you have to pull the stud out, and your best friend there is a, is a stud removal tool. This is kind of an eccentric, kind of a cam, comes around and pinches on the stud, then you can put a ratchet on there and, and pull the stud out. So that's that's your best buddy on the lathe. You get in there, cut out your weld where you think it's going to cut loose, flip it around, leave it in the chuck, uh, lock your spindle, and back that stud out of there. Okay, now what I've done here is I went in there and I cut out the weld around the stud, and then instead of just backing the stud out, I tightened it slightly. So now it's, it's sitting proud. I can go over to the... Uh, belt sander and make sure there's nothing on there that's going to damage those threads when I back it out. So it's just a quick step, just uh, belt sand that, put it back in, and then I can uh, back the stud out of there and not worry about damaging the threads in that lifter. Okay, well we've got our part uh, back on the belt sander. We've got the leading edge uh, thread cleaned. And we're ready to pull it out. All we're going to do is just throw it back in the Throw it back in the chuck here. And lock the spindle. Basically that's the same thing as putting it in two gears at once. We're going to take our stud extractor and uh, get a hold of that turkey. And we're ready to come out. Try to keep my arms out of the way so you can see how that's working. She's rolling along real good. I 
Okay, so we got it out, no damage. That little fellow is ready to go over to the uh, parts washer and get ready for, for welding. When we clearance that weld on this backside or when we got in there and cut that weld out, it did an automatic prep. It's ready to put a new stud in and weld it. Okay, so here's another one. These are real easy to save. You know, I'm this is I'm five for five. Okay, we're over here at the welding table now, and I thought I'd show you the setup. I got everything kind of gathered in tight here just so you can see everything. Um, I've got some stack blocks by Fireball Tool. These are the magnetic stack blocks. I've got an old ratty V block that I keep on the welding table. Uh, it's known to be two inch, and then I've got a half inch stack block stacked in right here. And I've got some others tight down on the ends, and the whole thing kind of, because the magnets, the whole thing kind of moves as an assembly, and it sticks down to the table, kind of nice. I have it coated with uh, a weld aid jelly, kind of a jello stuff. Uh, this is courtesy of CRC, and uh, I appreciate them sending that over. Um, so our finished size on these uh, rotators is two and a half inch. Now we've got the barrels cleaned, the barrels are prepped, they're edge prepped and chamfered. You know, so this guy goes in here, and when we cut away our weld, we're not really sure how much we pulled out of that. You know, we, we could be here, we could be here, we're not really sure where uh, uh, where these things land. So what we're going to do is we're going to assemble our inner. We've got our lifters cleaned and welded to the studs. Uh, lathe finished on the end, gave them, a, gave them a quick deburr. And we got new studs welded in there, threaded rod. And there's our crowns. This all goes together as so. Okay, and then we just drop it in here. And all we do is pull it out we touch and then we know we got our two and a half inch these rotators are a very specific length and if you get if you vary when you when you build these things you've got a conveyor line with parts hanging at different elevations so these have to be pretty exact so we know we've got our two and a half inch we just bring this out till it bumps in tack tack and then we can take it over and go vertical with it and weld it around the circumference all right so that's how these go together Okay, so these are all welded, done deal. They're still very warm, but we welded around the uh, perimeter of all those. And last up, uh, we're just going to give them a little bit of style. We're going to come in with a quarter round tool on the lathe and uh, just take off that weld and give it a nice radius. And then we're going to paint them. Uh, last up, we need to clean up our stuff. You see, we got some smoke and stuff that landed on the blocks but a little bit of that welding jelly good as new like it never happened so if you take care of these blocks they're going to serve you really well okay well these are uh done they they're off the lathe they get, they got a nice little quarter round on them we had a couple little inclusions that i don't really care about but they sure look a lot nicer than they do with just raw welds and i was telling you before about the uh but these holes we put in them got a little pinhole in each one and what you do with those is uh, these are hypodermic needles that have a grease zerk on one end and I get these down at Napa and what you do is you lift the rotator slip in the hypodermic and you've separated the uh, the elevator from the crown and you pump it full of grease turn it 180 degrees pump it full of grease pull your hypodermic out drop it down in the grease and you put grease in between the the elevator or the lifter and the crown and that little packet full of grease and these things still had plenty of grease in them they've been in service for three years but you got to do it after you weld otherwise you just got a big smoky mess all right uh anyways these five rotators are done and ready to go back to the customer i just thought i'd show you that hypodermic these are actually really handy for getting grease in tight spots and don't forget, people take a look, one look at something like this and go, oh my God, what am I going to do? How do we fix? There is no fixing that. What, 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 what's in there? What kind of voodoo is this? Don't forget, if it can be built, it can be unbuilt. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.